Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you my current roundup of some of the products I've been using, let you know my thoughts, as well as some favorites I have that are not makeup related. We have got a lot to cover today, so let's get right into this video. So to get in my current set of beauty loves, I'm gonna start by prepping my lips. I love this so much. A little collagen lip balm that one of my girlfriends gifted me for my birthday, and oh my goodness, it is so wonderful. The taste reminds me of like the little, I forget what they were called, but they were these like little strawberry and cream were the lifesavers. They were really popular when I was in like middle school. It has a similar flavor to that. And as far as the lip balm, it's really, really, the little bunny packaging is so cute. As far as my face goes, I've already done my skincare and I've put on my face primer so that we think could dry down properly. So on days when I don't put extra time into blending out a mineral sunscreen and I don't want to use a makeup primer, I really love the Round Lab Birch Juice Moisturizing Sunscreen. It's an SPF 50 plus and a P rating of 4 plus. It does not sting my eyes or irritate my face, which can happen with a lot of the Western chemical filters. Really cosmetically elegant for applying under your makeup products. And I've also got on the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. Every time I do my makeup, I've been applying a little bit of this and it's just like, it's the bottle that doesn't want to go away. I use anywhere from half a pump to a pump depending on what it feels like I need, but this is gonna last ages, but it's really nice to create just a nice hydrated, tacky plump to the skin. And then we're gonna apply my eye primer. A couple weeks ago, I had recorded the what's in my current makeup bag video. And I had mentioned I've been using the Urban Decay Primer Potion and it's so lovely. There's a reason the Urban Decay eyeshadow primers have been a favorite for some people for so long. The shadow goes on so easily over top of them, blend over. Since the end of last year, I've really been making a focus on adding extra hydration to my skin because sometimes I feel like especially in the dry winter air that we're experiencing here in Toronto my skin just feels a little parched especially more than it does in the warmer or humid month. I love just the original MAC Fix Plus. This is a glycerin based finishing spray. Just using a little bit of this on your skin between makeup steps, it helps just add a little bit of extra moisture to the skin and it can help reduce the overall makeup-y look on the skin that can happen when we're applying makeup. Product I've been using a lot recently, but it's not a favorite. The Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. The shade I have is 00 Fairlight. What made me decide to start using this again is I noticed there's been an ex shade expansion with this product since I purchased the one I have. And normally when you get this, it has a large kind of like puffball applicator. I remove that to keep it more sanitary and I just spent some on the back of my hand. BK Beauty 106 Round Top Foundation Brush. Working this in to the top of my hand. This one is the shade. When I purchased this, this was the closest shade to my skin tone. I think there's now a 0 0.5, which is like fair cool. Applying it under my makeup, it works, but it's slightly a little too golden for my skin. I don't feel like the temperature of the product skews too warm. It's just too kind of like a golden olive. Like you can see, it doesn't appear glaringly like orange on my skin. It just looks a little bit more of a golden olive shade. So if you are a little bit more of a neutral to cool tone olive. This might be a really beautiful illuminator for your skin. For me though, I wish it was just a little bit more neutral or a little bit more slightly pink in the undertone. One of my favorite shades for like a base highlighting product is the Auric Glow Lust and Morgana. It's a really beautiful pink base that sits fairly neutral. I like to add glow to my face because I feel like when we break my face into horizontal thirds, my middle section feels a little bit shorter than the upper or the lower. Adding a little bit more highlight is going to help brighten this area, pull the focus into this area, which will also help to widen the appearance of my face, which will help to add into the appearance of visual balance. The day before yesterday, I finished off the concealer I was using, Ulta Beauty Youthful Glow Concealer in the shade Fair Cool. I was going through my little backup drawer and I found I had a backup of the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer in the shade 20B Light Beige. Let's try this out and see if I love this as much as I did the mini size. I had a little while ago. I struggle a bit with the Tarte shade range because I find the next shade up from this is a little too dark. The shade down is too bright. Oh wow. I forget how much opacity this concealer has, but it does blend and spread out quite a bit. BK Beauty A506. I am just going to gently blend this out. This concealer takes a minute to dry down so you have some wiggle room and some playroom. That is so beautiful. It just 
smooths out the appearance of the skin. Next time I would use a smaller amount. I applied this very much the same way I was applying the mini size I had of this. Mini applicator is teeny tiny. You get a lot less product than you are with the full size. So just for next time, I would apply less product. This is really, really beautiful. You do need to spread it out because just applied kind of at full force. It is going to like, if you look here, just applied here kind of like full opacity. It looks a little makeup-y. If you need to, you can even spray a little bit more Fix Plus to rehydrate and allow it to slip a little bit. I remember I purchased this on the Tarte website because they had a bundle. I think you purchased four products and you got like a really, really steep discounted price. I've got a dry beauty sponge. I'm just gonna press over. And since this is dry, it's gonna help remove any excess product. If I don't wanna apply an all over base, I find a dry sponge to be a really invaluable tool. It's going to lift off some excess product and that excess product to make things look more makeup-y or more apparent on the skin, which there's nothing wrong with that. If you're gonna put makeup on, that to a degree, it's going to look like makeup. Although there are certain products that are so thin and there are certain techniques that can really make this look like a no makeup makeup. It's still not as thin on the skin as I would like it to be, but it's I'm excited to do some more testing to see how my opinions will change from the mini Size I had. Another product for my collection I've been loving is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. I have shade 20 Fair. Pot of creamy balm foundation and I like using my fingers. One of those days when you just want a little bit of coverage but you don't want too much coverage. You want everything to still feel pretty natural. Using a little bit of this blending it out with your finger at first is going to help warm it up, melt it into the skin, and then I go back with my complexion brush. And I can sheer out. Now, once I have that on anything I have left on my brush, I'm just going to gently run over the lower portion of my face. I had taken my wedding ring off right before I started recording because I wanted to put hand cream on it. And I, I cannot stand putting hand cream on with jewelry because it just gets stuck in all the grooves and under the rings and things like that. So I like to remove all of my jewelry, all my like fingers before I apply any type of hand cream. And I just saw them sitting on top of my blusher. I have a product I purchased about two weeks ago and I can't can't make up my mind if I like it or not. The Chanel LeBlanc Brightening Compact Foundation Long Lasting Radiance Protection Thermal Comfort and I purchased my usual Chanel shade BR12. Inside you have just a little puff and then the powder. This has been on my list for quite a while because the Chanel LeBlanc Powder Foundation here in Canada retails for $97. An almost $100 powder foundation. I was in shoppers, they were having like a spin event where you spend, you got a certain point multiplier. The day after I got it, I tried using this as a standalone powder foundation, like how I would use my MAC powder foundation or how I would use my beloved Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brightening Foundation. This did not look that great on the skin. It looked very heavy, very powdery, and I was like, oh no. I think I just wasted $100. I've continued to play with it a little bit and I found using it the way I'm using today is my favorite way or applying it as a thin wash over top of a tinted sunscreen. The way you apply it is key. So you have I've just done two little dips into it, but I'll take my brush. This is my favorite brush to apply it with. This is the BK Beauty number 103. I think this might be the BK Beauty. I think this is their bronzer brush, but where I would normally use something like my MAC 150S. I find that, that brush and this do not play that well together. It, this is just loose enough to help give this a really easy, smooth effect. But when you're picking up the product, instead of going right in with the tip of your brush swirling in, I find I have to use the side of my brush, pat in, and I only stick on one side of the brush. And then I'll take my hand, pat my brush, roll it around in here. And then we'll have a thin layer that for my first pass, I'll go through and press over like I was. And then I'll use that second pass to just gently buff and connect everything, which is very similar to the way I apply powder foundation. But this one, you just have to be a lot more cognizant of how much product you're picking up and keep it thin or it will look heavy. Applied sheerly and over a well prepped base, it's really beautiful. I want to continue testing this, put it through the full foundation wear test. And if you've seen any of my foundation videos before, I generally like to do a full five day wear test. It doesn't matter if you're spending $5 or $500. If the product does not perform, it's not worth the money and it's an unnecessary expense if it's not a product that performs the way you want it to. So no matter how much I spend, I want to make sure it's a good product. 
product because if I don't like it and I don't fully back it, I'm not gonna recommend it to you. The exception to that is if I don't like it, but I can see what someone else would like in. That's something that I've noticed over the last couple months. Reviewing product is so fascinating because you can either just review product and say, I like this, I don't like this, move on. I like to create more well-informed reviews. And that's something in the past, I've when I've watched my own videos back, I wasn't always happy with the reviews. So I'm like, something's missing. Last year, I thought about it on and off about how can I create a makeup review that meets everything I want as a consumer. Create the content that I wanted as a viewer. Now, there's so many different people out there, so many different styles. I'm just another person in a large pool of content creators reviewing beauty products. But I normally find with an review, there's certain things that I want to see that aren't mentioned. So I've taken the time, I made a big list, made my grading rubric, and I'm really excited for to start rolling out some foundation and concealer reviews to share with all of you. And I hope you find them as helpful as I'm hoping they're going to be. We've got some very new to me blushers. I've had these for about two days now, and I have to say, well worth the anticipation. From Finding Ferdinand. Finding Ferdinand is a brand I've been very, very curious about. A brand I originally heard about through my friend Ted, and, and Ted is a fellow content creator. His channel is Buffalo BD Boy. I'll have him linked down below. I think he sent a lipstick to Hannah Louise Poston. I was very curious. I was like, wait, you can create your own colors. So I looked into that, put together some shades I liked, never ordered them. Then over the summer, one of my favorite content creators, Wad Khaki of Khaki Reviews Beauty, did a collection called Summer Abroad, which was a mix of six cream blushers. There was like a coral series, a beige series, and then also a lip gloss. The collection did really well. It sold out before I could get my hands on it. And then I remember I was messaging back and forth with Khaki. I was like, if you do another collection, I would love some pinks. And then what do we know? She did the Apri Ski Collection. When thinking about the Summer Abroad Collection, how that sold out very, very quickly. When I saw this collection, I put the note in my calendar and then I was going through Khaki's video in the Finding Ferdinand post to look at the different products. I was only able to get one product, cream cheek color in the shade Sunrise. I love this shade so much. Here is Sunrise. The shade is so beautiful. Look how beautiful this is. And what I love is this is so similar to my natural lip color. When I logged onto the Finding Ferdinand site to order them, so many things were already sold out, but this blush was still available. I really wanted the shade adjusters and they were gone when I got to the website but I was able to get my top pick shade, which is so beautiful. You can definitely build the color up, but it's such a beautiful sheer flush to the skin that you can build up to have more opacity. So I did pull some shades to swatch and they have a range in temperature. So here is Finding Ferdinand Cream Cheek Color in the shade Sunrise. One of the first shades that popped to my mind was thinking about what colors I have that might be similar in my collection. Clinique Cheek Pop in shade number 14, Heather Pop. Slightly lighter, has a little bit more of a blue reflect in it, but very, very similar. So, so beautiful. I think Heather Pop has been in my favorites for the last two years. Next shade that came to mind is a classic Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the shade Exposed. I used to love this blush so much. I think it was like 2013, 2014. I used this blusher almost every day. Tarte Exposed, similar to Sunrise, slightly cooler, slightly deeper, and it leans slightly more plum versus a more of a beige mauve. One of the next shades that came to mind was the shade Hope from the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Blush. I thought this was gonna be really, really similar. Hold on, scrape off most of it. Rare Beauty Hope, it feels similar to Sunrise, but it's slightly deeper. Once it's sheared out, it goes just a fraction warmer. It's almost slightly more neutral. And number one to Chanel, Red Camellia Lip and Cheek Color in the shade Healthy Pink. And I feel like the concept is similar, except Healthy Pink is much, much warmer. So Sunrise, Healthy Pink, it's similar idea, but the temperature is slightly warmer. What I love is that even though I do have some similar shades, nothing is quite spot on. Something I really expected from a collaboration with Khaki because one of my favorite things about Khaki and her channel is her attention to detail with color theory. She's a painter she's, and she uses a term called art math. And I mean, just the curation 
combination of colors makes a lot of sense for khaki so I was very happy to be able to support khaki and purchase one of her blushers and I love that it really feels unique compared to similar tones I have in my collection. Also in my Finding Ferdinand order I did purchase two custom shades. First one I purchased is a cream blush and I named the shade Paradis Coral. When you're choosing custom shades from Finding Ferdinand you can use a few different methods. I use the hex code generator. With me doing content creation, creating thumbnails, if you look through some of my thumbnails, there's a common theme. I go to certain colors and I've bookmarked certain hex codes that I love that I just really feel like put my brand together as a content creator. And Paradis Coral is based on a hex code for a certain shade of pink red that I use quite a bit in my thumbnails. And here is what this looks like. And ooh. It is so, so pretty. Look at that. Ooh, so good. I'm gonna apply a little bit of this here just on the very front of my cheek. And you can see applied with sunrise, it just really ties in and just adds a little bit more dimensionality to the cheek. And for me, I love this shade because it just really helps brighten up the overall complexion. Then the other product I purchased is a gloss, which we'll talk about a little bit later. In a recent video, I talked about my love for the now discontinued and limited edition Clay de Peau Luminizing Face Enhancer in shade 103 Wonderful Radiance. This was part of the 2021 holiday collection. Love this so much. I've been using this a ton off camera. One of my favorite highlighters of all time, but I decided to give one of my permanent shades ago, and this is the Clay de Peau Luminizing Face Enhancer in the shade number 14, Delicate Pink. And it's so, so beautiful. Still using my handy rougher number 20 fan brush. And what I love about the Clay de Peau Luminizers, they give a glow to the skin, they never emphasize texture, and they just add this truly natural lit from within glow. There's a lot of highlighting products that claim to give a lit from within glow, but like a lot of of other makeup products, they sit on the surface and they look like makeup. These add a glow. Something I love about this highlighter, which I feel like it's be one of those things that if my husband sees this video, he's like, I should never said that that day. Back when I met my husband, he knew nothing about makeup. He does not work in the industry. He has no interest in it. I am lucky if I get him to wash his face with a cleanser because he likes to wash his face with shampoo and then put body lotion on his face. And I would love him to have a real skincare routine, but but that's neither here nor there. Since getting together, you take an interest in each other's interests, and he's really taken interest into makeup and my love, and he's also become very observant. And there was one day when we were out, I was wearing this, and then he said, what highlight do you have on? And then I remembered which highlighter I had, I was like, wait, is it good or bad? He's like, I don't know. He's like, it looks nice. He's like, but compared to your normal ones, he's like, it looks expensive. And I'm like, oh, it is expensive. And he's like, what is it? I was like, Clay de Peau. And he's like, that is expensive. And I'm like, uh-huh. There you go. Hypercritical husband said it looks expensive and it looks nice. So we're gonna apply a second layer. I think here in Canada, these are like, I think they're $120 for any makeup product. It's expensive, but ooh, they are so beautiful. And using like a big fluffy fan brush like this, they will last you quite a while. So beautiful. When I was pulling some products earlier in the month, when I was replacing the products that were in my previous makeup bag, I wanted to use a blush and a palette. And I was like, oh, that's be great because it's one of my favorite beauty brands and that is the brand Roman Bare Layer Palette. And the one I have is 02 Strawberry Mood. I liked this shade. I was like, oh, that's cute. It's like a nice pink apricot. And it's gonna be a really beautiful brightening shade to brighten up the inner portion of my cheeks. It brightens up slightly, but it doesn't do anything. And then as far as a brightening blush, it just kind of disappears into my face. I want a shade that's gonna brighten up my cheeks. I swapped it out for the Daisy Blending Mood Cheek in the shade 08 Blueberry Sorbet. Four baked blushers in different shades of pink. This shade down here is very, very similar to the Roman. I like to use my same little powder brush and I just kind of dip in all four shades. And then I'll go right here on the fronts of my cheek adds light. It almost acts like a light highlight or a matte highlight. And you're tying in the different tones of the face. And this is going to help kind of flatten and brighten the center portion of the face. So then you can either use more of your shimmery highlighter or you can tie it into your blusher. I tie it into my blusher. This month I've been loving Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Ethereal Glow. I purchased this while I was in the States visiting my family for Christmas. I purchased this also because I can't find it at Sephora anymore and 
I thought Sublime Flush was my favorite hourglass ambient lighting blush. No, it's this one. This also is very fitting of, you know, the current season I'm in of my life with blusher where I love a nice, healthy, brightening pink. And this is so beautiful. All the hourglass blushes are blended with one of their ambient lighting powders. This one is blended with ethereal light and ethereal light is currently in my washroom in my everyday makeup bag. It is just such a beautiful powder. And what I love about the hourglass ambient lighting powders, it feels like since it is cut with a finishing powder and most of the shades are quite soft and if you get a shade just enough to brighten your skin tone and add a little bit of flush you could almost apply it half asleep in the dark and it would be very very hard for you to over apply it it just brings the complexion life i mean we need a little bit of definition around the eyes because now the eyes just kind of feel lost and lost in the sea of pinky colors there's the overall effect it's so beautiful and they're expensive but if you find an hourglass ambient lighting blush that speaks to you, you will love it. Speaking of like under eye area, I have been head over heels in love with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder. This is in, I think this is called Light Pink. Yes, Light Pink or Pose Claire. This is so, so pretty. I don't remember what video I saw, but there was a video I saw where the creator spoke about using a pink powder to soften the blend between your under eye and your blush. And when I heard that, it made so so much scent to me. It's like a transitional tone, but once I apply my blush, I just go right under my eyes. It helps to brighten and soften down any edges that your blush might left behind. With the hourglass blushes, it's very hard to build up a lot of demarcation, but this just gives it that little extra something. With this being e.l.f., the powder is less than $10. You can't go wrong for $10. The Peri Para Peritage, I think this is like the Mood Face Palette. I think that's what it's called. The shade is 01 Prestigious pink, a mix of eyeshadows, a highlight, and a blush. And what I love about this is you get 10 eyeshadows. So on both sides, you get your all over base color. It's gonna be the largest pan. Then you have four complementary shades and you can always mix and match between the two. And if you compare this to the Roman palette, you can just use this, this, and then a mix of these two browns to recreate the Roman palette. And I just, I like the pigmentation for this all around. Well, I feel like if you're very, very fair skin, you're new to makeup and you find some colors too, too overwhelming. Roman Bare Layer Palette could be a really good option. For me, when I'm comparing it to all the other products I have from Roman, and I have at least one thing from every single category from the brand. For most of the brand, I have the entire range. This just kind of missed the mark for me. The Para Para Palette is a completely different story. So most days I will mix together both of the base shadows and apply that all over the eye. It's just a general wash of color. It's so beautiful, so easy to use. A couple weekends, I'm actually traveling solo down to the States for my sister-in-law's baby shower. I am so excited. First grandchild. I am so thrilled. I'm gonna have a niece. She's due in May and oh my goodness, having the opportunity to buy like cute clothes and maybe one day a little bit of makeup. Just thrilled reels me. I just, I love things like that. I don't know if children are in the cards for me and my husband or not, but my friends have kids. Now, you know, there's going to be a grandchild in the family. I'm so excited. I love having like children around so that way I can still like interact and give gifts and spend time with them. It's just, it's so great. And now I'm mixing the two pink shades. Being around kids, interacting with them, there's just something about it that is so fulfilling, especially the older I get. In my early 20s, I just really didn't care for children, but you know, as I've approached my 30s and now I'm in like mid 30s range, just being around children is just so fulfilling. And I think that goes along with, you know, like this whole like self care, taking care of myself journey. There's just something about taking care of myself, growing as a person. It's made me really appreciate things that, you know, I might have taken for granted before. Like, you know, like kids are kids, they grow up, interact with them, they can talk. But no, like from early on whether you're working with a baby or spending time with like a puppy or something like that. You're helping to set the stage for the rest of their life. You're able to, you know, put a positive spin and just really, you know, set more of like an optimistic base. At least this is what goes through my mind. Being able to influence and feel like you're helping to set the stage for future success is just such a warm feeling, feeling and, you know, spread happiness everywhere you can. I mean, that applies to everything 
everything and everyone around you, not just babies and puppies. It's something else that's bringing me so much joy right now. And now I'm just taking my large powder brush and the center shape, I mix it all together and just put a little bit extra. You know, we apply all the cheek colors on this channel. Also recently I purchased a Balm Essential from Chanel. The shade I purchased is Lila and I don't remember if it was Khaki or Amanda Z who was talking about the texture of the Balm Essentials from Chanel. Even though they are just almost like a waxy cream stick, there's something about the formulation that almost blurs the appearance of texture, fine lines, wrinkles, and the shade of Lila's is just so beautiful. Cool toned, almost like a holographic shift. I love it so much and it is one of those products that when I put it on, my husband's like, what did you do different? You looked smoother. I'm like, what they said was right, so. <laughs> Thank you to Amanda and Khaki for talking about the Bone Essentials from Chanel so highly. They are lovely. Speaking of Chanel, last month I was raving about how much I love the Rouge Coco Balm in the shade 938 Keep Cool from the Winter Glow Le Beiges collection. And here, I'm gonna put this on my lower lip. So here it is kind of like a normal application. I'm gonna build it up a little bit more so you can see what, what little bit of color it has. So you can see it doesn't really alter the lip color too much. So sorry if I'm talking, if I'm trying to keep my lips from touching, but it adds almost like a silvery beige tint to the lips with a pearl effect. I loved this so much. The day when I was at the Shoppers Beauty Boutique, when I was purchasing the Chanel LeBlanc powder and the Balm Essential, I asked the sales associate if they had the chilling pink shade of the Rouge Coco Balm, and she checked there was one left. I'm like, let me have it. So this one, is the one that looks almost like a fluorescent pink. And the other shade in the range in the Winter Glow collection is Cocoon, which is like a red and I knew I would never wear that, but I thought this was a nice pink and I would purchase it, but this one I'm gonna really build up to get any trace of color. But if you look at Chilling Pink versus Keep Cool, Chilling Pink has even less of a tint than Keep Cool does. It's almost like the a bright pink version of Cherry Chapstick, cause you know, like Cherry Chapstick it gives that teeny, teeny tiny bit of like a pinky flush lips. This is gonna be like a more like highlighter pink tint. It's okay. I mean, I have it, I'm using it, I'm going through it. I've made quite a dent in it already, but for Chanel pricing, I think these are like $54 a piece. I don't know if I would buy that shade if it came out again, because it doesn't do enough. I love Keep Cool, but Chilling Pink is just kind of meh. It's like a, it almost acts like a clear balm. And there's other clear balms I prefer for a better price than this one. Like if I want a clear lip balm, I would happily go with this one. And I blotted down the balm because I want to show you some of the lip products I've been loving. The first lip product I've been loving is from Roman Glasting Melting Balm. And the shade I have here is O2 Lovely Pink. Again, this is going to be a tinted balm. But you can see here the level of tint this has. It gives color, but it never feels like too much color. And what I love about this nice kind of like brightening and livening pink is it's one of those shades that just really kind of brightens up the entire complexion. Even though it is quite a brightening shade, I find I still like to blot it because the stain it leaves on the lips is top notch. So once I apply this, then I will go in with a lip pencil and my lip pencil obsession of the month hasn't changed since my last makeup bag. This is the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Definer in the shade Pink Slip. I love this pencil because it's just a no thought lip pencil for me. I take it on the corner of the lip and just let the pencil do the tracing. It's so beautiful. My only issue with this is I feel like I'm going through it really quickly. I feel like compared to my Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat and Pillow Talk or my beloved MAC Dervish Lip Pencil, I'm going through this one a lot, which worries me. I love a good lip stain. So the lip stains, I've had two different ones. I've had more of like an everyday lip stain and then I've had more of like a going out or party lip stain. My everyday is from Peri Para. This is the, both of them are from Peri Para and they are the Ink Mood Glowy Tint. This is shade number 10. The full product names and the shade names will be listed in the description box down below. Shade 10 is like my favorite everyday shade. 
It's a pink, but it has a little bit more of a muted mauve aspect to the color. Again, blot it down. And then a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm going out or I want a little bit more impact on the lips, then I'll apply the other shade. And this was from a limited edition collection. It has a cute like little anime bunny. And this is shade 08, Pink Do It. And this is a really brightening, enlivening pink. I think you can still get this shade on Yes Style. There you go, just a little bit on the lips. I like to take my time, press it together, and then use my lip, and then use my finger to diffuse the color. And then once you've kind of blotted it and pressed it between lips and you feel that tack starting to happen, then I take my tissue, give it a quick press over. And then now that's kind of like my going out ombre. It's it's not the most intense color. I'm not a big intense lip color person, but when I was thinking about what color I wanted to do for my Finding Ferdinand custom gloss, I wanted something that was like my perfect version of one of my all time favorite lip glosses and that is the matte lip gloss in the shade See Through. It was one of my favorite glosses to put on anything because it's a pale nude beige, but it almost is more of like an apricot beige because it can pull a little warm. I didn't really care about that. I just threw it on over anything that felt too intense because that beigey nude would tone down anything. I wanted something slightly more pink. So I went to my hex color list and I ended up using the shade that I used in all of my thumbnails. If you look around my thumbnails, normally around me, there will be a subtle glow outline. So in Canva, you can put like an outline behind you. And I always want something that's gonna be a little bit lighter and brighter than the background to help push me forward and separate from the background. But I don't like to use pure white. So I use a white with more of like a pink tint. This shade I called Fleur Glacé, which is strawberry ice. And when I was putting this color down, I was like, this is going to be what I want to max see-through to be. It's going to be a slightly cooler, more pink max see-through. Look at that color. Ooh, second layer. It is so pretty and it is so, so glossy. I just, I love that so, so much. Now, the Finding Ferdinand glosses, you can either do fragrance free or to continue with your customization process, you can pay $3 more and put a fragrance with your gloss. I added the extra $3 and that's because I saw one of the fragrance or scent options was strawberry. And for a shade I was calling Flay Glossé, why not add a strawberry scent and it is divine. Again, this is gonna give you that like strawberry cream saver, I think is what they were called, effect. And it's so beautiful. A little mist of MAC Fix Plus. I ran out of my backup mascaras. I needed a new mascara. So when I was walking through shoppers and getting those Chanel products, I was like, oh, let me grab a mascara. And I saw Essence had this new Lash Without Limits Extreme Lengthening and Volume Mascara available in a brown shade. I think this was like four or $5. So the first thing to note is the brush is a little rubber tipped cone style brush, which is generally my favorite style of brush because I feel like I can really push in and build up the lash look I enjoy. And this gives a really beautiful, defined, and slightly lengthened look to the lashes. When I compare this to some other mascaras I love, like the CoverGirl Clump Crusher or any of my favorite K-Beauty mascaras, this just doesn't give the same length that I want out of the mascara. And I find it's also a slightly heavier mascara, so it doesn't hold a curl very well. But that's not the big deal breaker. It's just okay. I mean, for $4, you can't complain too much, but for $4, you can also get some better mascaras like the Essence Lash Princess Mascaras. Those are wonderful. This is just not a favorite of mine, but the big deal breaker for me with this is after about 30 to 45 minutes, it starts to transfer and flake off. That leads me into applying another mascara on top of this. One of my sweet friends, Andy of Andy Does Stuff, for my birthday, she gave me a Sephora gift card. So I put that gift card towards a few new products and one of them is a mascara that's been on my wish list the tower 28 make waves mascara this is in the shade drift which is their brown mascara once i have on my essence mascara i then use my tower 28 and i will apply a coat on top making sure to press and hold up as i pull through my lashes and that just gives a little bit of extra length gives a little bit of volume and it helps to 
really lock in a curl. And I love that you can spill this one up quite a bit. So there is coat of each. On my other eye, I'm gonna show you just the Tower 28 mascara by itself because I feel like it thrives that way. I feel like on its own, it just looks so beautiful. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a tubing mascara formula because it removes pretty easy just with warm water. I believe here in Canada, this retails for about $25. And you know, that's on par with some drugstore mascaras. So I think the L'Oreal Lash Paradise is like $18. This is really good. I could see this being a new like holy grail favorite moving forward. And I still love my Romaine mascara. I love the Mood mascara. And I love my CoverGirl. I love the CoverGirl Lash Flash Clump Crusher, but this just gives me a little something extra. I can definitely see myself repurchasing this going forward and it matches my sweater. So quickly for fragrance, I love cherry notes, especially something about the month of February, you know, Valentine's Day is in February. Something about cherry just feels very, very romantic. And I love a good cherry scent. Like I've had Tom Ford Lost Cherry. I love it. It doesn't last. It lasts for like two, three hours and it's gone. And for the price of the Tom Ford fragrances, I need more than two to three hours. If I'm gonna spend $500, I want all day where I want it to be on on my person until I take a shower. Tom Ford Lost Cherry does a vanishing act, which I don't like. However, I have found a layering combo that lasts all day and it smells so beautiful and it features cherry. The base layer is going to be limited edition. It's going to be part of the Bath and Body Works Valentine's Day collection. And this is the new Sweetheart Cherry. This smells almost exactly like Tom Ford Lost Cherry, but slightly sweeter and it doesn't have as much of that almond base in it that Tom Ford Lost Cherry does. But for Bath and Body Works, it lingers for two to three hours. I mean, about the same amount as the Tom Ford. And it's my sense, it's part of my sense of the day. It, it's still there. And I've had this on for about six hours. I mean, I've already been out, done my day. And here we are putting on some more makeup. And I came home, cleansed my face, reapplied my base makeup, and I'm recording. And I can still smell my fragrance from this morning. And it's so good. So start with the Sweetheart Cherry Shower Gel. Then I apply the Sweetheart Cherry Body Cream with a few drops of the Necessary Body Oil put in. And then I'll use the Sweetheart Cherry Fine Fragrance Mist. The last thing I do before I head downstairs is I apply my fragrance. And my fragrance, I love pairing this with, is from Guerlain. And this is La Petite Robe Noir. This is the Eau de Parfum Concentration. This, I'm going to put more on right now. So, so good. And this is one I wish I would purchase the larger size. I did purchase a smaller one. You can see I've got a nice dent going in. When this runs out, this is full big bottle worthy, instant repurchase worthy. It is so good and it fetches so many compliments. These two layered together, no matter where I go, no matter when I've wear it, no matter what outfit I've worn with it, this always garners compliments. And you know, it's always nice to be complimented. And a lot of times I run into when friends hug me they'll be like you smell nice but this is one where like you know people will stop and be like you smell really really good and it's like oh well thank you for any of my hairdressers out there my hair like it's lightened to about a level 10 and I was going through my cabinet and I need to go to Cosmoprof and get some more toner but I was like what do I have in here so I ended up mixing together a uh, 9NA 8V and 8A and then I was like okay that could be a little bit darker because now we're going darker than my color so then what I ended up doing is I used those as a half ratio and then I did the other half clear to meet that 1% and then I did a full like one-to-one -one ratio with that in developer and I left it on for five minutes and here we are. I mean, we're still a dark, we're still blonde. We're moving into the dark brown, but it's ashy. It's a toner. It will fade out pretty soon, but that shocked me when I dried my hair and saw how dark it was. It's not far off from my natural color. Random, I never thought I would mention as a favorite, but I have to because I love them so much. And that is hairbrushes. Everyone needs a good hairbrush. Different hairbrushes do different things. Because think about when you go visit your hairdresser, they will have a few different brushes. And for me, with someone within fine hair, I've been doing PRP. I use my topical, topical minidoxyl, everything I can do to keep my scalp healthy, to maximize the amount of regrowth that can have much of the androgenetic alopecia or pattern balding that I'm experiencing. So tools are very important. I like my tools to be 
gentle. I don't want too much tension on my hair. So I like to keep my tools very, very simple. And over the last, and over the last year, I found some tools that have just really, really been such a blessing. So I always like to start off with a comb for detangling. And my favorite one is from Wet Brush. This is their just basic comb. And what I love is it's just really, really gentle. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as their brush, but just made like a comb. It's really nice, really gentle. After my shower, after I apply my leave-in, any type of leave-in treatment cream and oil, then I will use my just regular wet brush vented detangler. And this is just a really, really nice detangling brush. And I like to go one step further because these bristles are quite loose. It's quite flexible. So then I like to use my tangle teaser. This is just a classic. I like the version with the handle versus the one that fits in the palm of the hand. And this is the variation for fine, fragile hair, but these bristles are double rowed. So you have a longer row, then you have a shorter row, and they have a lot of give. This is my favorite for spreading product through my hair. I like to blow dry my hair just because I don't like walking around with wet hair, and I like to maximize my volume. So then the most recent brush to my collection is this round brush. This is, I believe the, I can't remember the exact name. I'll have it linked down below, but this is from Wet Brush, and this is their round brush. And what I like about this is the base of the brush is triangular. So what I like about this is when I'm doing my blow dry, I can get the brush in. And since it has the wet brush bristles that are quite flexible, I'm able to get in, work with my blow dryer. So say for instance, I've got my Dyson blow dryer in my hand. I've got the concentrator on. I'm able to go through and work. And the way I like to do this, because normally like when we're doing professional sound blowout, you would constantly, you're working and rolling your hand, passing over the hair. For me, since I like to minimize, what I like to do is get the brush in, work, pull through, roll down, blast, and then reset the brush, go back through and pull down. That way I'm not pulling and tugging on the hair. Well, worked in <laughs> some dry shampoo. This is just really nice, really flexible brush, a little bit harder. I was only able to find this on Amazon and the US Amazon. This brush is a little bit more specialized, but every night before I shower, I always use, this is called the Wet Brush Pro Shine. Abby Young mentioned this and I tracked it down, found it on Amazon because I couldn't find it at the beauty supply. For some reason, my local Cosmoprof only stocks the regular wet brush and the vented wet brush. I was able to find this one on Amazon and this has a mix of a like a synthetic boar bristle with the typical wet brush flexible brushes. The two different bristle types help to pull oil throughout the hair. So a lot of times when you're cleansing your hair, you want to focus on the scalp and remove buildup of oil or sebum from the scalp and pull it through the strands. And that's our aim when we shampoo. What I like to do is use the brush and then I'll start from the bottom, pull my way up. That way we're making sure not to tug on any snags. And once you get down and start pulling it from the root to the end, it will help pull any oils from the roots to the ends. Because think about our scalp is up here. Our ends are down here. Our ends are the oldest, most dead part of our hair. So pulling down those natural oils will just help to kind of recondition and nourish the ends of our hair so they don't feel dry and crispy. Especially if you're someone like me who chemically treats your hair in a little crispy, that just helps to minimize the crisp to the hair. And then last but not least, we should all be cleaning our hair brushes. And I recently purchased this little brush cleaning tool from Kitsch, something that bothers me. But when you've got someone's hairbrush and you see all the hair in the brush, I normally just used a comb. I would normally just take a normal little comb that you can get in a big pack from the dollar store and just go through and clean out all the things. And then I'll use like an old toothbrush and work some shampoo in. But this little tool makes it easier. So if you're someone who has like a lot of hair, say for instance, you're someone who uses a brush like this, so it has more packed bristles, you can use the pick side and go in and pick out any hair. And then you have the more toothy side to go through and work it out. I clean my brush after every single use. That way I don't have to worry about going in and spending an entire like five minutes trying to pick out all the hair. I can just, after I use it, do a quick wipe through and we're good to go. I feel like this video was gonna be a lot longer than I was originally anticipating it for it to be, but those are my current favorites, things I'm loving. We're still trying to figure out my favorite way to present these, whether I wanna do the makeup bag style or if I wanna do this style. Either way, I hope you enjoyed today's video. All the channels I mentioned will be linked so you can watch some of my favorite content creators after this. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already until we see each other again. I hope you're taking care of yourself wherever it is you are in the world and I will see you later. Bye y'all.